So the application of the design of the BioFlow 5 trial was the gold standard, a randomized clinical trial. BioFlow 5 was designed as a randomized non-inferiority trial, designed to demonstrate non-inferiority to this benchmark standard, the Zion Stent. It turns out, as we'll soon discuss, superiority was instead demonstrated. We also combined the outcomes of the BioFlow 5 patients with two predicate regulatory trials, BioFlow 2 and BioFlow 4, in what's termed a Bayesian analysis population. And this is a way to enhance the efficiency of a clinical trial to demonstrate with even greater what we term statistical power with a larger sample size with greater certainty of the results. We demonstrated in this trial a few notable findings with regard to the trial's primary endpoint of target lesion failure. There was a significant difference in this outcome at one year that favored treatment with the Osiris stent compared with the Zion stent. The outcome of target vessel-related myocardial infarction was also significantly lower in the OSIRO cohort compared with the Zion's cohort. The rate of target lesion revascularization was exceptionally low. Procedural success, which is the successful treatment of the lesion and the absence of in-hospital major adverse cardiac events, the success observed in this particular study with the OSIRO stent is really a composite of many different features. One of the factors is a highly biocompatible bioresorbable polymer. The other is a very proven antiproliferative agent, sirolimus. But the third is a very thin strut design of stents, 60 microns that are th the thinnest in class. And here we have a comparative trial of two stents, one that is 60 microns in thickness, one that is 81 microns in thickness. This may be one of the contributing differences. The manuscript, I'm pleased to say, is published today online in the journal The Lancet.